I think that this is Fujifilm's most underrated camera. Forget the X106, the V, the X Pro 3, the XS20, the new XT50. Forget them all, forget them. I think that this is all you need. I think you can probably save yourself some money and choose this camera instead. Now I'm pitching this video at people who love to buy things brand new. I know, I know. I do always advise going on eBay or online somewhere where you can buy from someone reputable and buying second hand. I do, I do generally think that's a good idea and I do it myself. But from time to time, I like to buy new and I know a lot of you do out there. It's a safer and surer way to know that what you're paying is protected and you know you can always take it back and if you don't like it there are you know there's loads of reasons why people buy new and so this video is particularly for you and so having said that if i didn't want to spend over a thousand pounds this is the camera i would choose like i said if i was going to buy new but before we get into that i just want to let you know about a free preset i have that you can download today I've been using this preset for literally everything at the moment. This is my London preset and I encourage you to use it as well. And I've also just created a 30 day program for making money online as a photographer. Go check that out. And so if you're new to this channel, and if you are, please like and subscribe. But if you're not, and you know about my channel, what I'm talking about, you probably know which camera I'm gonna talk about. And that is the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. Now I do have some advice if you're gonna buy this camera, but we'll get into that in just a bit. I wanna tell you why I think this is the most underrated. Now I think that Fujifilm do an incredible job when it comes to color. We all talk about Fujifilm's color science and how it makes us feel when we see one of those Fuji JPEGs. If not, one of the recipes that we've created ourselves or borrowed from the Fuji X Weekly app. They're stunning. And I think a lot of people are just trying to emulate something they're seeing maybe on social media or on YouTube or TikTok or anything like that. They wanna find an emotion in their photos that they've seen somewhere else. Now Fujifilm do a great job in doing this because Fujifilm cameras, particularly something like the X106 is really hard to get these days. It's really, really tricky. And so, my advice is to head in this direction. The X-T30 Mark II, as you can probably assume, is the next step up from the X-T30. There are some notable changes that have made this a bit more well-designed and more sleeker, and some of the features are just a bit better, like the autofocus. But for the price, which is only $899, this still packs a punch, and I think it's gonna deliver what you are probably looking for. Now, why it's underrated is because of all the hype that is surrounded by the newer cameras, the X-T50, the X-S20, the X-106. All those cameras have hype. Now, don't hate me for saying this, but they all perform relatively near enough the same. The quality is not noticeably big enough for you to choose a cheaper product over something more expensive. Now, the only reason I would direct anyone towards an X106 or an X-Pro3 is the user experience. If you're gonna use something like that day to day and just find joy in picking that up, taking photos, then be my guest. I generally believe in the user experience and how it makes you feel. But if you're looking to emulate photos similar to that camera without spending all that money, then this is probably the most underrated camera. Now you could also argue something like the X-T3, which I've also owned, or the X-T2, or even the X-T1. Those cameras really still do pack a very good punch. Here are some photos from the X-T3 that I had back in 2019. I mean, it's a stunning, stunning camera. And if you were to compare them to something that was newer, X-T50, X-106, you would really struggle to notice the difference, especially if you were uploading to social media. And I think that is what I'm trying to get at here, is that there is no noticeably big difference, apart from user experience. 
but I love the user experience of this. It's only 378 grams. It still is a 26 megapixel camera, which is still pretty impressive. I mean, how many more megapixels do you need? It has the X processor 4. It's not the fifth generation, but I mean, that's still pretty fast. And for the price of it, under a thousand bucks for a, you know, a good camera like this, I think you'd struggle to get something brand new, just as good. Now, this is not mine. I will clarify, this is my partner's. My girlfriend got this for her birthday and it has been generously lent to me on occasion. But she loves it, she uses it all the time and it is a fantastic camera for everyday use. Street photography, travel photography, and even if you wanna take some videos, which she did recently in London, they look great. I mean, here's a few videos of me just wandering around taking shots aimlessly, but it's good, it's not too bad. But the one bit of advice I'd like to give to you before you buy this underrated piece of gear is possibly think twice about the lens that it comes with. And that is the XC 15 to 45. From a street photography standpoint, I do not love this lens. And the reason is it is an electronic zoom. It's slow to turn on. And if I haven't used it for a minute or two, it will switch itself off. I have missed so many shots already with this lens. I cannot express my frustration more. Now, that's how long it took. So a bit too long for my. <laughs> I love that it's cheap. I love that it's affordable. The image quality looks actually, you know, not bad, but as a user experience, it's horrendous. It's horrible. And I don't talk bad about many things, but I really would advise anyone who was doing street photography, quick fire on the fly shots, I would advise to stay clear of this. It sits on the X-T30 beautifully. I love the way it pairs. The weight of it is gorgeous. Well, as you can see, it's just, you know, it's a nice looking thing, but I would opt for something else. I stuck a 35 mil F2 lens on here. That looked great, really very nice setup. I used that in Ireland, got some great shots of that. That would be more preferable to me. I think the 18 to 55 would work well on here. That's a great lens. I think that's Fujifilm's most underrated lens. You can check out that video here. But all in all, that lens is a no-go for me. But as I have this lens in my possession and you would like me to make a review about it, please drop a comment in the section below and maybe I will consider putting something together. All in all, this is a fantastic camera. For the price, for the weight, for what, you might want to use it for, I think that you couldn't go wrong. I definitely say this is more aimed at photographers rather than a videographer, but you can use this hybridly and that's the nice thing about it. Check out this camera. I have linked it in my description if you want to look at it more and know more about its specs. And if you want to read about my thoughts on it, you can also head over to my website where I have a blog and I've written about this lens already. So go check that out. And also at the moment, there is a 50% sale on my presets. You guys have responded so kindly so far. So if you wanna go and grab those presets, do so now. Go check out the X-T30 Mark II.